Hi, this is Hank Hanegraaff, president of the Christian Research Institute and host of the Bible Answer Men broadcast with another Hank Unplugged Short. This morning, I read in our local newspaper the story of John Shelby Spong, who died September 12 at his home in Richmond, Virginia. I don't know how many of you know who John Shelby Spong is, but he was one of the most well-known Episcopalians. He served as Bishop of Newark, and he was the spiritual father of more than 40,000 New Jersey Episcopalians. Um, He's well-known for a lot of things. He denied the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, denied miracles. But he was roundly lauded. I mean, he was loved and lauded. But in particular for, quote unquote, holding on to the kernel and sweeping away the husk. And... uh, In his last speech, I watched the whole thing. In fact, I watched it this morning when I read about his death. I did not know that he had died a few days ago. But in his last speech, it was, oh, maybe half hour and then another 40 minutes for questions. He he railed against the creeds of Christianity particularly against the incarnation of Jesus Christ and the Trinity. Because for for Spong, Jesus was thoroughly human. To suppose he was God is, from his perspective, to trivialize uh, Jesus as sort of a Clark Kent figure, you know, suddenly becoming Superman. He uh, he spoke about never asking God for mercy. He spoke about the reality of Darwin's tree of life, the idea of everything arising from a single cell to present consciousness. He didn't, of course, talk at all about how how Darwin's tree of life was uprooted by the Cameron explosion. No evidence whatsoever for the origin of species by by common descent and natural selection. Putting that aside, he calls himself a, a disciple of Jesus Christ, and then he proceeds to completely redefine Jesus and says that when Jesus was put to death, He proceeded to non-being. In other words, he passed out of existence. He memorably closed his last public speech with the words, good luck. And he received a standing ovation from, from people who looked like they were at least as old and perhaps older than I am. He was lauded for for disparaging hymns like Amazing Grace, How Great Thou Art. He called them sadomasochistic hymns. And uh, yeah, he, he, he talked about theistic churches as being anathema. He said, don't worry about the future. He said, Judas was a fictional character. I mean, the list goes on. But this man, when you read about his death, you might suppose he was one of the greatest Christian leaders of all time. But the reality, the reality is this. The Apostle Paul asks how anyone can say, as John Shelby Spong said, that there is no resurrection of the dead. For, said St. Paul, if there is no resurrection of the dead, 
that not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, you are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead, but he didn't raise him from the dead if the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And, and if Christ has not been raised as Bishop John Shelby Spong, known as Jack, preached throughout his entire life, then your faith, says St. Paul, is futile. You are still dead in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. I bring this up simply to say that for John Shelby Spong, when he died, that was the end of conscious existence. For the Apostle Paul, John Shelby Spong continues to exist. Famous in this life, the question is, what will be his condition for all eternity? And that is something we should all ponder, not just from the perspective of the life of John Shelby Spong, Bishop of tens of thousands of Episcopalians, but is also something that we ought to to contemplate from the perspective of our own death. Will we simply cease to exist? John Shelby Spong said yes. Or, or will we continue to exist in the presence of God or apart from that presence? You know, God does not rub out the crowning jewels of his creation, even if they have decided to live apart from him. Something to think about today. Thanks for tuning in.